All right. So I don't know about you, but uh, I've been getting a lot of random advertisement lately. And uh, recently I received this ad for canned tuna. And then another one for cat litter, of all things. And I said to myself, I wonder what the advertisers think of me as a persona. So apparently this is who I am. And of course, my question is, how did they get my photo? Anyways. I uh, travel a lot, and I was rushing to the airport to catch my next connection flight, and I received this Burger King ad on my phone, and I thought, oh. well, like any reasonable person would do, I missed my flight and had a hamburger. I mean, I think that was a good idea, right? Well, we are literally bombarded with advertisement all the time, and we can't escape it. It's on the phone. It's on the laptop, streaming content, and retail. And they won't even leave us alone in the toilet stall, for heaven's sake. So in my presentation, what I want to talk to you about is what is the current problem with advertising and marketing? And what's a possible solution that we can look to? And what are the possible benefits that we can anticipate? And just to make it a little bit more concrete, I'm going to actually go over a few use cases as well to help kind of demonstrate using different industry examples. And then lastly, I'm gonna do an interactive demo. So some of you will be asked to come up. So if I point, don't run away. In case you're wondering who you are in this photo, you're actually not the one that's holding a weapon. You're this one. When it comes to advertising and marketing, they're literally just bashing us and destroying us. So why is today's ad paradigm so broken, right? Because, I mean, understanding people is really the key to sales and marketing and customer service, but yet, advertisers frankly just don't have the right tools at their disposal. All they have are likes, shares, and so forth. Today's a throwing darts approach to customer engagement leads to annoyance and loss in sales or worse, tarnished brand reputation. Now here's a chart from IAB, the Internet Advertising Bureau, that shows why people are enabling ad blocks. And just in case you're not familiar with ad blocks, it basically prevents ads from popping up in your phone or your laptop, for instance. If you look at the top two bars, what it shows is that it highlights that the timing and relevance are way off, way off. Now, one commentary here is that we actually looked at this research quite a bit, and what we found out is that we actually, it's not that we don't like ads, believe it or not. If you were to be surveyed, you would actually say the same thing. Rather, the issue is, give me that ad when it's relevant, personalized and timely for me. The issue that you're seeing here is that it's not personalized, it's not timely, so when you get it, it's ridiculous. <clears throat> what this chart shows is all the different ways that advertisers tries to know you, right? We of course call it innovation. Now I have two kids, and when they were little, they found amusement in the darnest annoying things. Like they would just randomly come up and just punch me in the stomach. And if I, pain, if I felt pain or agony, they thought it was the funniest thing, right? Well now I have a young niece who's two years old. And when I come to visit her, she doesn't say hi or hug me or, or even acknowledge that I'm there. Rather, she walks it very slowly, very methodically. And then, wham, she just stops my foot. Why are you little? And by the way, I'm actually her favorite uncle. You should see the way she treats other people. 80% of today's data is unstructured and untapped. Now, this is something that we don't really talk about in the advertising and marketing space, but it's huge. This dark data is everywhere, in social media, in messaging platforms, retail and offline. And what it means that brands and advertisers, frankly, can't make sense of that data. And all the 80% of data that's unstructured means that that's data that you can use 
to better understand your consumers or your customers. But here, you can't. I mean, what a waste. It's like little John is scraping off his favorite Brussels sprouts on the table for dog spots. So what do we do? Human data analytics makes sense of the 80% of unstructured data. Now, the concept of human data analytics is about using artificial intelligence, mobile, wearables, and the Internet of Things to be able to understand and gather deep insights about people, how they feel, think, behave, and actually engage brands. Speaking of um, unstructured dark data, you know, I, I'm convinced that my wife is part of that data set because, uh, frankly, I can't make heads or tail of what she wants, what she thinks or says. Um, I don't know about you guys if you experience that, but certainly with my wife. Human data analytics translates IM messages, social media content, app usage, email. It interprets body language, movements, physiological, and even environmental data from wearables and the Internet of Things. And it turns that data, the, the rich multimodal data, into human data classification for emotion, cognition, behavior, and context using very sophisticated AI and ML algorithms. Now, one of the basis of this is the use of cognitive science, which you can see is a multidisciplinary field. So it deals with everything from psychology, philosophy, computer science, to neuroscience. To really understand the human aspect of how we think, feel, and behave. Moreover, when we start to apply machine learning capabilities, like that you're seeing here, and be able to apply AI techniques, we allow computers or systems to be able to systematically recognize objects, people's emotions, their context, and their behavior. Now, this level of human engagement and understanding is hugely valuable because when you have this level of insight from the unstructured data, you can st start to allow brands to be able to programmatically support campaigns that's going to be actually effective versus annoying. And it targets when it's the right time, right frame of mind, right timing and context, so that when that messaging is received, it's welcome. It's perceived favorably. Going off a tangent a little bit, speaking of engagement and things that just kind of matter, make sense to us. The male species, and I see the men here as well as the women, we, I use the term species instead of gender because for a reason. We use a very sophisticated communication protocol. We grunt. We grunt to convey very complex different sets of messages. So for example, when we grunt with a short nod, it means I concur. I sincerely believe what you're saying is a superb idea. Whereas a short grunt with a hand gesture, uh, that's like saying, stop annoying me because I'm watching football for heaven's sake. Can't you see that? Right? Or one of those long grunts. Hmm. I feel your pain. I can deeply empathize with the emotional trial that you're going through. Right, men? Uh huh. Am I right? Privacy by design. You guys are probably thinking, human data analytics, that kind of freaks me out. Well, that's a great segue to talk about privacy. Privacy and security is of the utmost concern for us. And at our firm, we strongly believe that data belongs with not the Googles and the Dropbox or the Facebooks of the world, but it belongs with us, and it should. And there are capabilities that I spoke at at my keynote earlier today that talks about how we can start to own our data back. That's really exciting. Moreover, privacy by design, coupled with blockchain cryptography, gives us the capability to be able to convey and share information in a secure fashion that wasn't available before. 
Moreover, as you can see here, we believe that best regulation is frankly self-regulation. And if you look at some of the privacy framework that was originally developed for mobile, we have to kind of question that and revisit it. And I think some of these organizations are in fact doing that. Because in the new era of Internet of Things, we have incredible amount of surveillance and surveillance that's continuous and constant and potentially hidden, you really have to rethink your privacy framework. And it also requires leadership at the industry bodies level to update some of these standards and best practices. So how does human data analytics actually help brands? By the way, that wasn't me. Well, it accurately targets product or service when it's most welcome and relevant. So again, going back to what I said earlier, it's not that people hate ads. If you deliver a message or an ad when it's timely and, and actually meaningful, it is very much useful. So it's being able to quantify consumers' emotional reaction to brand engagement, to drive campaigns and promotions based on contextual and emotional triggers, analyze unstructured data to reveal deep insights and patterns and relationships, and to increase brand loyalty and emotional connection with your target segments. And for analytics, to be useful, it has to be real time, in the moment. Let me give you an example. My son started to order his own entrees at restaurants. So he said, Dad, I really want that fettuccine Alfredo. And then, split second later, he sees a waitress carrying a rack of barbecue ribs. And he says, no, I, I actually want that instead. Well, just because we behaved a certain way in the past, doesn't mean that we're going to behave in the same predictable manner in this very moment now. So this is where real-time data analytics and human data analytics comes in. Moreover, let's talk about the delivery framework. For consumers, they're frankly tired of this push model where the advertisers dictate the campaigns and force this on us, right? Because we want to be in control, not, not the brands. Recommendation should only come when it's personalized and timely, preferably by somebody that we trust. And this is the influencer model. So in the case of human data analytics, the API services can reside within, let's say, messaging platforms. And it listens in to the conversation that's happening kind of in a natural, fluid fashion. When it recognizes that there's a real need and that's urgent, that's in the moment, it actually then sends a message to trigger a message. Now that message or that promotional ad doesn't go directly to the target customer. So if I'm having a text conversation with Simon over here, and I'm the one that's saying, I need a new Audi, because I drive a Toyota Prius, it doesn't come to me, but it actually goes to Simon. Because Simon actually knows me as a person. Because here's what's happening, there's a two-step process. The AI does automatic computation to filter. Then the human computation gets involved, which is the influencer, to figure out, in fact, that is, in fact, very tailored for me. Because Simon knows me, he knows if that's relevant. And only if and only when it's relevant for me, he shares that with me. When I receive that, the experience feels very authentic hyper-personalized, and as a result, it's greeted with a warm welcome. All right, so let's talk about a few vertical use cases. I've intentionally been focusing on marketing, but the human data analytics using AI machine learning is incredibly effective in just about all verticals. In financial services, robo-advisor is a major topic these days, if you're not familiar with it. Now, what's missing from the, this automated asset location tool is the fact that it's missing the human. Where are the humans, right? It's scalable, it's cost effective, I get that, but it's missing the human connection. And we are talking about people's money and wealth. So this is where we're actually working with a publicly traded financial services technology company to integrate human data analytics into the robo-advisor platform to put human back into an automated tool. For all
auto manufacturers, they want to know the emotional state of drivers. Do they love that car and the way it drives? And now, before a new model is launched, uh, car manufacturers will typically do what they call a thrill test. They'll gather some random or nervy pe people, put them behind the wheel of this new model that's about to launch, and actually observe how they enjoy that you know, 60 or 80 kilometer mile um, you know, turn around that, that, that course, for example, to feel their exhilaration, their fun, their delight, basically their response. Well, the problem is that that current approach is very manual. It's basically it's just strapping GoPros and other things to figure out what the reaction of the drivers are. What we're talking about is being able to systematically capture that information that the driver is evoking as they drive. By the way, this is exactly why the Toyota Prius made it on the road, because frankly, these measurement tools really are subpar. We're actually working with a Japanese automaker to integrate human data analytics into their new models to determine the emotional as well as the cognitive state of the drivers. Now, this has huge implications to even insurance. So there's a large Australian auto insurance company that's interested in, are you distracted because you're texting or are you too tired or perhaps maybe you're drunk? Well, we can actually start to figure that out automatically and affect your premiums. Now in retail, human data analytics is being used to gauge product favorability, which simply means when you actually go shop for that purse or that perfect outfit, do you have that emotional tie, that the connection? Well, the system is able to actually automatically identify that, and it could be from your wearable devices, right? Your heart rate goes up, or it could be from a CCTV, or it could be the way you're moving, or you, the fact that you're within a certain geofence environment. Well, when it recognizes that and sends a signal to the CMS system, it then sends a real-time messaging to that person on the phone, their, their watch, or maybe the connected TV digital signage that reinforces and just kind of tips them just at the right point to influence their real-time purchase decision. From hospitality, healthcare, live events, cruise ships, I mean, all of these things What's core to all these service verticals is customer service. Now, unfortunately, the problem is, you know, I, I fly all sorts of airplanes, mostly bad ones, and they always send an online survey after the fact. Companies should be able to know in real time when someone is happy or dissatisfied. So human data analytics actually allows for physical environments like hotels and airlines to be able to actually know what's happening. So it's the automated customer satisfaction survey without the survey. In heavy industries, manufacturing and steel manufacturing as well, human data analytics is being used to gauge fear, confusion, and possibly even accidents. So here what you're seeing is somebody working on a telephone or electric pole. Well, we're actually working with a augmented reality platform, BYOD platform, as well as a helmet called Daiquiri to be able to integrate human data analytics to be able to identify if in fact that worker just encountered a live electric wire. Wow, I mean that's scary. Well, we will be able to actually understand the presence of danger as well as emotional response of that particular worker versus somebody that has maybe felt fear or has been uh, impacted by the electricity and has fallen and nobody knows, as an example. And some of these technologies have been first and foremost fielded in military. Uh, so for example, if you can imagine soldiers fighting in the field, they want to know the cognition level. So if I've never been uh, in a battle before and somebody's shooting at me, how am I going to deal with that? Am I going to just freeze, put myself and my, my men in danger? So this notion of detecting cognition is really important and originated from the military. Now, I'm not able to actually show you this video because it's not all integrated uh, because we're a technology conference. But I am going to actually move on to the demo portion. And for those of you that joined at the onset of this presentation, I told you that if I point, you will participate. No, actually no. No, I actually need some participants. So here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I promise. And a little embarrassing, but mostly fun for me. 
So we're going to actually demonstrate some of the capabilities that we're talking about that uses facial recognition, image recognition, text analysis, speech to text, and so forth. So what I need is somebody who has maybe a purse or a briefcase that has a lot of things in it. Just come on up. Just kind of share with us the contents of your stuff. I think I see a volunteer. So please come on up. Let's give a round of applause. All right, so you have to actually come up to the speaker here because um, we don't have a lavalier or, or microphone. So first, tell us uh, who you are and uh, maybe some of the things in your purse. Oh. Okay, my name is Phyllis Santa Maria, and I have a lot of exhibition catalogs. I have um, a plastic bag for when I go shopping. My... I'll do this. I've got my my wallet, my keys, and my transport pass. Is that enough? That's great. That's great. So here's what we're gonna do. So what we're going to do is we're going to place some of those contents. Oh, thank you. Thank you for not destroying public property. So if you put the contents onto that chair, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of our analytics to actually take a picture of that. So unfortunately, they don't have a, a TV cast, so I can't put it on the on the TV here. But what we did was we took a picture of that, and the system is going to automatically identify the the objects in this picture. So if you could just come back up, uh, just so everybody knows that I'm not faking this, if you could just read what it's saying systematically. So it's um, BTW. This looks like money, business, commerce, wealth, finance. Also observed, money, no person, shopping, finance, offense, cash, administration, vehicle, wallet, people, still life, security, purse, bank, euro. What do you think about that? I think it's, um, it's encapsulated a lot of information that's actually not there. And it has got some of the main elements. Which is not, which is not bad because there was, there was no human intervention involved. That was all systematic, right? Now let's do another one. I'm going to show you a different application that's using also human data analytics. This one looks at more of the facial recognition. So all you have to do is, here's what it looks like. All you have to do is just push that happy face and smile or do whatever you like. Okay. And it's going to take my photo. Yes. So, so I know you can't see this. Afterwards, you're welcome to come up. It says neutral, and if I scroll, it shows her face, and it has an associated emoji. So you can have a branded emoji as well. Now, we're not quite done, so let's come back up here again. So now we're going to use this. So let, let's say we're going to have a conversation. So is there something that you desire, maybe more money? Or, or perhaps maybe a vacation, or or something else. To be, to be fitter. To be fitter. Okay, great. So, so send me a text message. What would you say to me, that in terms of your goal? Okay, I'm I'm going to the gym again because I want to be fitter. Because I want to be fitter.
All right, so what, what did you get here? Smile. Smile. Now click on that smile and what do you see? It says, what, what does it say? It says, it says um, strong positive. The result we got after natural language processing is strong positive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I'm sure when you woke up this morning, you probably didn't think that uh, you'd be sharing the contents of your purse publicly. So thank you. Thank you. So what we just demonstrated in real time is just aspects of some of the API services that we've developed that starts to kind of showcase some of the human data analytics, whether it's understanding text, the sentiment from NLP, whether it's a facial, whether it's image recognition, or actual gestures, which we didn't show through a Apple Watch, for example, or physical data that's coming from health data from the Apple or Samsung or Google, for instance. All right, so let's, let's talk about the, the key takeaways. The key takeaway is this. Consumers are, frankly, sick and tired of annoying ads. And the ad industry are equally sick and tired of people like us that's putting ad blocks. So what's the solution? The solution is this notion of human data analytics that starts to use AI wearables, mobile, Internet of Things in a multi-modality fashion, right, with underlying machine learning capabilities to be able to identify when, in fact, there is a strong demand signal that indicates that it makes sense because it's highly personalized, it's on target, and it's delivered in an influencer-driven recommendation. And what the brands derive from a benefit is that it becomes actionable and it's, a, it, it's engagement that actually delights the customers in a welcome way versus annoying them, frankly. So make sense of unstructured data. Find out how you can incorporate human data analytics into your solution offering. Thank you.